My name's Joseph Carter, and I am the Mink Man. When I was a senior in high school, I started learning about the American mink. I was told that mink were horrible, vicious little animals who were impossible to tame. Challenge accepted. I've been in love with mink ever since. I get mink from fur farms and give them a new life. In this new life, my mink live as naturally as possible, even hunting for their dinner the way a wild mink would. So come join me on my adventures as we learn more about this intense little predator, the amazing American mink. All right, so inside of here, so this is where you're, let's start with this because this is where the pump is located, okay? So it's got a nice little fake rock around it. So this has your pump right here. Okay. That's gonna send the water up to the biofilter. And then we also have that little three quarter inch line that's gonna go to the, uh, to the kind of the tunnel system. Right here, you see this little unit? This is part of the ionization system. So this is a copper probe. So that's gonna be connected to this. What this does is it'll, uh, there's a low voltage electrical current that goes through here. So it's only 12 volt and it's going to dissociate the copper um, from elemental copper into copper ions. The copper ions are gonna to wanna to jump from one bar to the other. When they do that, because we have water flowing through here, they're gonna get swept away and they start to dissolve in the water. So what happens is um, algae absorbs it. So copper is highly toxic to green algae. It's not going to eradicate it, but it's going to control it. So you're not going to get long stringy algae or anything like that. So you're going to get just a nice little covering on everything, which is going to help uh, be supplemental fish food for any type of fish that you put inside here. So this is going to control that. So there's going to be a little number thing on here. It can go from zero to 10. So typically on a new system like this, I would set it up at a two or a three because you don't have anything in here right now. So that's going to get the copper ions in the water and it's going to keep uh, anything from growing inside of there. So this stays inside of here. So there's a little, little um, holder right here on the side and that's going to get dropped right inside of that. So this is our, this is the dosing system. So there's a little bag inside of here. So that's going to have your uh, microorganisms living inside of it. So these are specific strains that have been pulled out. Um, we have replicated them basically, and they are going to break down leaf debris, um, fish waste, animal waste, any type of organic compound. So these are facultative bacteria. So these guys are going to kind of uh, adapt to a lot of different situations and they're going to feed off of all that stuff. So they're going to populate the biofilter as well as all the rock and gravel throughout the entire system. And that's the basis of an ecosystem pond. So the aquascape ecosystem, we have several different components. We have a pumping system, with a pre-filter. The pre-filter could be a skimmer system, like a traditional skimmer with a basket. This is a modified version that we call an intake bay. So all the debris is gonna come into this little bay for easy removal, but that's an important component of it. So once we have the water captured, pressurized, it sends it up to a biological filter, it's gonna detoxify the water. The water then returns back into the system via a waterfall, which helps to oxygenate the water, increases circulation. You don't have issues with mosquito larvae or anything like that. So what we've done is basically we've taken a natural aquatic ecosystem, deconstructed it, figured out what makes those work. So if you go up into the mountains and see a pristine trout stream, you're gonna see boulders and rock and gravel and logs and all these different things inside of it. It's gonna be high flow rate, real clear water. Good dissolved oxygen so all those pieces we've kind of deconstructed that and then we try to replicate that in our actual water features it comes. oh look at that just exactly the way we designed it water's flowing over that log and it's going to split around that rock I like that. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful i love the sound so far so we might want to block up a little bit over there. Maybe not though. What do you think, Olive? <laughs> <laughs> so you can see how we set up those little intermediate pools yeah. for, the, for the animals to go in the little shallow areas over into the medium one and then all the way down into the deep zone. Little guys like the guy we were playing with, he might be totally comfortable wading in some really shallow stuff, yep. but swimming is just terrifying to him because yeah. he's a baby. So what we'll do is, with having all these different water levels, we could take a mink in. For example, right here is a perfect example. We could drop this down, like you're saying, to, to wading level. So the mink could wade in this. And uh, 
maybe make a little temporary barrier so the fish don't swim over. Put a couple little fish in here and the baby mink can practice at very, very basic, basic levels that catching would be awesome. stuff. I love to it. Build its confidence. And then once he feels confident enough, he'll on his own eventually start venturing into the deep water. And that's the thing with it with the baby mink is they need to be able to do it on their own. Yep. If it's like, okay, you gotta go from this rock to that, oh they're scared to death. And if you try and push them or, or forcefully encourage them in any way, you can forget it. Yep. They're done. And if they can't gradually crawl into it, it takes them forever to get up the plane. Okay. So being able to give them really shallow spots to start in is super useful. Nice. Just for getting them used to the water. Makes sense. Let alone when they're learning to fish in the more easy spots, down to the really deep spots. And then the cool thing is with these tools, so we can essentially have three different training levels. We've got the that level, especially if we drop the water down, is the super, super basic level. Where the meat's swimming around in there, barely has any water. Up here will be the medium level. They're, they've got the basics down. It's a little bigger, which is nice because it's not just deeper, it's actually a little bigger. Mm -hmm. So you got a little bigger area to swim around, quite a bit deeper, but it's still a lot easier than this will be the, the, the pro level. <laughs> the adult experienced confident mink level where they'll be diving all the way down and searching the bottom for fish. And so. going through the yeah. tunnels. <laughs> and then we've got, on top of that, we've got the cool little tunnel systems. We've got the, the logs and the places that they've got to search out and find the fish. So, I mean, so much better than the artificial things we've been doing for years where we've got, you know, a fish tank or a cattle trough. and. It's just not natural at all. This will make it so that when we take them into a realistic situation, they're like, oh yeah, that's a lot like home. <laughs> Whereas it's a cattle trough or a fish tank, the only thing in common they have water in them. Like, that's the only thing yep. they have in common. Exactly. Whereas this is just like what they're gonna see when we take them out for the first time. It's just a different location. Yep. So this could be super exciting to be able to get it yeah, going. Yeah, this intermediate one, we also add it, added in kind of like a really shallow entry over here. Yeah. So, I mean, that's only right now, I mean, it's not even an inch of water on top of that one rock. Yeah. So, so they, they can kind of come in there the, off of that gravel bed and they can just make their way to that ledge to another deeper one yeah. and then eventually kind of going down inside. Yeah, and just let them on their own, play in it till they get confident enough. Going in. You think are they strong enough swimmers? Will they be able to climb their way up the up the waterfalls? Oh yeah, the adults. Or just they'll be able to grab, I guess. The right? babies uh, won't. The yeah. babies will all be fumbling around. They probably wouldn't even try it. But yeah, the adults will shoot up and down the pretty easy. That's awesome. Okay. Now if you look at big you know, it just creates this little upwelling area where water kind of backs yeah. up. There's little weird little crevices that we made. They have their kind of blind ends, but that's exactly where the fish are gonna go. So those fish are gonna go into those areas where there's not a lot of flow. And that's gonna, it'll really help to train your animals. Yeah, they'll, know, they'll learn where to look for fish Absolutely. in nature. Cause that's a big part of, of teaching a mink to catch fish is honestly the finding the fish part. So it's kind of funny, you would think that it'd be the actual capture that's Sorry. the difficult thing okay. to teach a mink. The difficult thing to teach them is to find the fish. You get them out in a pond that they're, and they're not accustomed to it, they don't know where to look. Their instincts help them a lot, to be honest. The instincts say, hey, look in crevices, look here. But there is an experience factor as well that this will be great because they'll have both the instincts and the, and the experience working for them. So. <laughs> You want, yeah, to, uh, you, want to open, you want to open up that muskrat uh, den and kind yeah. of give us a little description on that? That was a lot of fun, uh, you know, kind of troubleshooting and figuring out, <laughs> figuring yeah. out how to make that work. Yeah, we had to do a lot of yeah, our we heads did. together, didn't we? Okay, so I wanted to take the opportunity to explain this while the pool was, was clear. So when we originally filmed this, the water was all murky because, you know, these rocks all had dirt on them. So the water going on the rocks made the water really murky. But the beautiful fil filtration system has cleared up the water. I mean, you look at this, this stuff's like crystal, crystal clear. So now that it's crystal clear, I wanna explain the, our little artificial muskrat den. Right down here is one of the holes. So right down under this log and down in this gap is the opening to one of the pipes. I can feel it right here. So right where my hand is, is the opening of one of the pipes. 
and the pipe wraps around. And it's all under these rocks, right? And then it comes up here. Leads from there, goes along here, and then you see this black pipe right here. It comes up, tees into there. Right here I have an access point if I want one. If oh, I look at the flow. Wow. If I need to reach in here. <laughs> it's working perfect. Um, and, and check out what's going on. If you go this way, we've got the actual muskrat den. So, right now it's filled with gravel and there's no bottom to the bucket. So any water that's going to be coming in here on a regular basis from the mink in their fur is going to be able to just seep out and it won't accumulate. Now, if we end up using this as more of a, a home for a mink, we use it as an enclosure, we'll just put a towel in there and they'll have nice bedding. It won't come out and get in the water, but they can stay dry and warm. There's probably about six inches of gravel there, so you could drop that down if you wanted to. Yeah. It's pretty, it's pretty thick. And so we've got lots of options there for drainage and uh, putting bedding on top of it. Mm -hmm. And then if you look down here, there's a flow so there's a pipe feeding into this and um, it creates a flow so the water is uh, not stagnant in those pipes. One thing I was concerned about was if uh, the mink carried something up in there under the pipes and left it, like a dead fish or something, that it would just sit and decay in there. So. We talked about that, and it's, we've got a flow system, so it's constantly pushing water out. So if anything gets taken up in there, it will eventually work its way out into the pond again, and won't just sit and fest. And the other thing is, is we've left this in such a way so that I could block this off. If I don't want them to access this for whatever reason, uh, we don't have it yet, but I'm going to get a, a little wood block, a little uh, post, and we'll just put it down there as a stopper it'll prevent them from going up in the pipe at all. And they can still swim through and utilize the, the pipe just for exploration and fun and chasing fish, but they won't have access to this little artificial muskrat then if I don't want them to. Which really, having options and having control with animals, especially me, is, is key. Being able to exclude them from places and then allow them to go in and not just be at their mercy and let them do it whenever they want. <laughs> And this is strong enough. You don't have to worry about that. That'll right take there. a beating. Yep. <laughs> wow. Cool, well, cool. I, the girls are definitely having fun with it. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe they would. <laughs> Once we Exploring throw. stuff. You want me to come in the pool? Yeah. Another thing we we did is we made sure we're going to be fencing this off, so it will be like an enclosure. Um, the reason being. We don't want the little girls to have access to this when we're not there. Mm -hmm. We want them to be completely excluded unless we allow them in. Uh, the other thing is we want to be able to keep the mink contained if we choose to. So that, let's say there's fish in here, they're not catching fish and hiding them in places around the yard and having it go to waste. We want to be able to contain that, control that. Also, uh, a third reason is we might just end up using it as an enclosure. Yeah. and have a certain mink or rotate mink that get to spend a night here or a yeah. day here and that way they can't just they don't have access to the full yard yep. and the third reason if i'm on three or four i don't know which, <laughs> whatever number i'm on right another reason is i want to be able to let our monitor lizard raptor have access very cool and i don't trust him in the full yard he's still so small yeah i feel like there's ways he could find some way to squeeze through some gap yep or maybe even climb the, the, the the brick on the house and yep. the fence. I, things like that just scare yeah. me. Yeah, yeah. So it'll be really nice. We'll, we'll put a fence in that is totally raptor proof. Yeah. And we could turn him loose in the day. The beautiful part is, is the heat of the day in the summer is yeah. when the mink are least interested in playing. Yeah. So even if they were in here, they'd be sleeping. Yeah. They yeah. wouldn't be playing. They wouldn't be swimming very much. They'd be sleeping. Yep. Even with the cool water, they just, the heat of the day <laughs> turns them off. They just go to sleep. So we can remove them if there's a mink who lives here or if. We just use it as a playground. Whatever the case is, we remove the mink, let raptor play here during the heat of the day, and then put him back inside, and then it's the mink shift for the night. Things like that. 
It just gives us some cool options. Options are good. And, right? um, <laughs> who knows? Maybe one day we'll have an otter. We'll have an otter running around here. You never know. That would be awesome. So. Oh, well, it's been a blast. I appreciate the hospitality. You've been great. Um, it's been a, a, a lot of fun just learning and listening to everything that you've done here. And I can't wait to see the progress. Yeah. So it's been awesome. I can't wait to see the, the pictures, the training, and, all, and the videos and everything that you're producing here. I mean, that's why we do what we do. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited. Awesome. Well, it's been great. <laughs> yeah, we can see it. big or I can't access it but right. it'd be kind of cool to have if I could get to it. Maybe a big one that I could go in a little bit. Not like in but reach in it. Just to give them like a shaded area kind of thing. I don't know. I need to do something with shade them. So the mink are finally enjoying the new addition to mink land which just makes my day. Being young they're timid about water and being that previously this part of the yard had nothing to offer them, just hot, barren rocks, it took them a few days to discover their cool new playground. But today, well actually last night, they really started discovering it. And they are having a blast. So let's check them out and join their... Hey Vila, what are you doing, silly girl? Let's check them out enjoying their their new addition to mink land it's so cool these waterfall and the little little creek bed so it's not just a pond mink really like running water and that little shallow flowing running water is just awesome for them to play in see this guy's down in the kiddie pool and you can see how having those little shallow areas are great confidence boosters for when they're first exploring water. Because these guys previously had nothing deeper than a bath pan to swim in. So they, um, even though they're old enough, they should be confident with water. They haven't had the experience yet to make them confident. So having these little shallow pools is vital to building their confidence when they're first learning to swim, even if they're an older mink. These could be mink I pulled off the farm at two, three years, four years old. They would be the same way because they haven't swam before. These little shallow pools of water are vital in building their confidence and helping them learn to swim because they don't have to just jump in the deep end. They can sit and play in the shallows. And it makes the place more interesting because just diving in the deep end isn't as exciting to a mink as being able to go in the different levels. Some places they're walking, some places they're swimming, some places they're diving to the bottom. It's just awesome, just freaking awesome. They did an outstanding job with this project. Just, just outstanding. Super, super happy with it. Okay, so we have one thing left we need to figure out on this pond, and that is a fence. We need a perimeter fence to go around there so the mink can't get out or into the pond without our control. And we want to obviously keep the girls safe, and the little girls jumping in the pond is super, super interesting for them. So we want to be able to, you know, keep them safe and have control of whether the mink can get in or out of the pond. Now this is what we've come up with for the garden. Uh, the downside is it's kind of ugly. Our pond's really pretty. We don't want to make it look ugly with a weird, awkward fence. So this is the fence we put in. So what we want is some ideas from you guys. So the struggle for us is to figure out what kind of fence that we can use that the mink can't climb, can't get through. And in fact, more than just mink proof, we want even like a, a small rat can't get through in case we ever use it for training purposes. So even a small rat, we don't want to be able to fit through any gaps or chew through. Uh, the mink can't climb it and like the fence we have set up over there It could just prevent them from climbing at the top. It doesn't have to be the whole way through But the other thing is we want it to be see-through We don't want to use like the perimeter fence We have that's a privacy fence because we want to be able to see what's going on in there if the little girls are swimming or If the mink are, are you know doing their thing in there. We want to be able to see geez, dude You're like eat me alive. He's hungry. Can you tell? 
uh, when they're hungry, they just play and play and play and they play a little too rough. <laughs> and he's getting kind of rough on me. Relax, Boone. I am not dinner. I am not dinner. Don't eat me. <laughs> See, don't pull your hand away. You'll cut yourself. I know. <laughs> Yeah, and the key is when they bite you like that, you don't pull away because you'll you'll cut yourself on their tooth. So even if they're not biting very hard, you're pulling it will will make you bleed. But anyway, you're distracting, sir. So we need your guys' help. What could we use? Glass would be amazing, but also amazingly expensive. The other concern is it gets dirty. Whenever the sprinklers turn on, it's going to be filthy. So it might not look that appealing after a while. If we could find a way to make the glass fence work, that'd be cool. I just don't see that as realistic and most of the wire options either look really tacky or they just don't work for what we're trying to accomplish. So if you guys have any ideas, comment in the description below.